So if we could just figure out how long this little segment is, we'd know the path length difference. Okay. Um, well, we know this angle is called theta, right? This is the angle between the beam and uh, the center line. So what's the relationship between these two angles? Is that the center? Is the dotted line to the center line? Ah, well, no, it's not. Um, this would be the center line, but of course, if theta is the angle between um, the beam, let me see, am I getting confused here? Ah, yeah. So technically, So technically, this is theta, right? The angle between the center line and the line with the spot. However, when the screen is very far away from the barrier, and when the slits are very close to each other, this angle is approximately theta. So we're going to be using a lot of approximations here. We're going to be using a lot of approximations. Uh, as long as I, I can't uh, draw the screen far enough away, but if the screen is very far away from the barrier, and if D, the distance between the slits, is very small, then all these little angles here turn out to be pretty close to each other. This isn't theta, but it will be approximately equal to theta in the cases that we'll be looking at, because uh, you can already see that they're, uh, they're kind of similar here in this picture. And if I could draw a bigger path length difference and a smaller distance here, they'd be even closer to each other. Okay, uh, so this is approximately theta. So what's the relationship between this angle and this angle? Yeah, these are complementary. So how big is this angle? If we call this angle alpha, how big would this angle be? Inside the triangle. What's theta plus alpha? Yeah, and what's alpha plus this angle? So this must also be theta. That's right. So this angle at the top of this little right triangle is theta. We have two pairs of complementary angles here. Here we have a right angle, so theta plus alpha is 90. And here we have another right angle, so alpha plus theta is 90. OK, so let's use trigonometry to find out how long this segment is. Which of the sides of the triangle do we, do we have a variable for? Here we have a little right triangle. Which of these sides have we already invented a variable for? Now that's the unknown. Oh, D. Yeah, this that distance is D, right? This is the D distance. So how can we use trigonometry to find this side? So it's so this is D, then it's sine. Or cosine. Now remember this up. Yeah, while you do it. So this should be a right angle. Okay. So this is the right angle. So this is the triangle. Yeah. With theta being now you don't want to draw it with horizontal and vertical legs, because the legs are not horizontal and vertical. So the triangle we have here is It's tempting to always draw it as horizontal and vertical legs, yeah. but we want uh, instead a vertical hypotenuse. And yours is so sine of theta is the path of difference over d. So 
So G is like theta. Yeah, the path length difference is D sine theta. spot whenever the path length difference is a whole number of wavelengths. Well now we know that the path length difference is d sine theta. So now we can put this up into here. So now we have this formula. You probably saw your instructor use this formula in class. Okay. So it's good to know where this formula is coming from. So notice, we already explained what the m lambda, uh, m lambda means. The m lambda just means a whole number of wavelengths. And now we know what the d sine theta is. That just turns out to be geometrically the way to find the path length difference. d times the sine of theta turns out to be geometrically the way to figure out what the difference is in the paths. So this is just saying, again, we're going to get a bright spot whenever the path length difference between the two waves that they're traveling, calculated by d sine theta, is equal to a whole number of wavelengths. Okay. Uh, and again, there's a bunch of approximations we made here. We were assuming that this angle was equal to theta, and we're also assuming that these two lines are parallel. These two rays are not really parallel, because after all, they're going to intersect on the screen. But again, if the screen is very far away, then they're going to be, um, then uh, they're kind of close to parallel at the barrier. Since the screen is very far away, these are close to parallel at the barrier. Um, again, I haven't drawn this realistically because I've drawn the screen too close. The screen should really be way out here. If the screen was really way out here on the blackboard, then the two waves really would start out pretty much parallel to each other. So there's a bunch of approximations here. Okay. All right, anyway, that gives us our uh, approach. And we know we get a dark spot when the path length difference we get a dark spot when the path length difference is half a wavelength or one and a half wavelengths, or two and a half wavelengths, or three and a half wavelengths, that's where we get a dark spot. Well, how can we calculate this path length difference? What would be a good expression for the path length difference? It's just still d sine theta. d sine theta is the path length difference. So here's the formula for the dark spots. And get m to be zero, one, or two. So all the d sine theta is, it just turns out that there's a geometrical argument that shows that that's the path length difference. Okay, so this is when we get the dark and the bright spots. Okay. So suppose they told you, ah, so something else to mention. What about units? We should always worry about units here. Um, what are the standard units for D? Meters. And the standard units for lambda? Meters. Because they're, uh, they're both distances. There's a whole bunch of distances here. All right, now, if you think about it, though, we don't have to use standard units for distance here. We just have to use the same units for D as we do for lambda. So you can use any units for your distances you want as long as they're all consistent with each other. Now, there's going to be a lot of unit conversion on these problems because these distances are very different. Some of them might be in meters, some of them might be in millimeters, some might be in nanometers. 
Um, so you oftentimes do have to do unit conversion. That's easy to forget. You have to, tra um, so that's a good first step. The very first thing you should do with these problems is convert everything into standard units. Most people find it easiest to convert into meters, but if it's more convenient to convert into something else, you can do that. All right, so that's something uh, to watch out for.